modern dating often actually comes across really cold and um, goal-oriented, pragmatic. You know, there's a sense that people are reduced to being a product. You assess, you evaluate, you store, you discard, maybe, for sure, never, you know. And it's done to you and you do it to others. Modern dating is often like a job interview. You go, you meet, you sit across someone, you lock eyes, and you try to answer as best you can so that you can impress, and you're checking to see if the other people impress you. Do they have the right ratio between asking you questions versus listening versus talking only about themselves? You know, it's this whole measurement kit. Um, but what modern dating doesn't have is a sense, enough anyway, is a sense of adventure, it's curiosity, it's playfulness, it's imagination, it's creativity, it's anticipation, it's mystery. It's all the stuff that people actually experience when they meet someone and the beautiful thing unfolds, the unexpected nascence of love or of a beautiful love story for, for a short while. And I think that one of the things that needs to fundamentally change first and foremost is context. So I'm gonna talk about context, education, seduction, and connection. And context is, I can't tell you how often I suggest to my patients, to the people that I talk to, to go on a date with an activity. And hopefully an activity that involves movement. Because when your body moves, there is a different energy. You can focus on the thing you're doing, then you go back to yourself, then you go back to the person and you get that triad of energy flow that is very different from the interview. It can be going live to a concert, it can be going for a hike, it can be going skiing, it can be for a drive. A drive is great because it's like fishing. You have to look parallel and you can talk about a lot of things without having to look at each other like that. But you are seeing landscape, you can, you can leave to talk about each other, to talk about something, see if you connect around that something and then go back to each other. And that offers you multiple levels of interaction. So context, and the next most important one around context is actually go on first dates with your friends around so that they, you integrate, you bring somebody into your world where you are already comfortable and loved, etc., or in theirs for that matter. And you get to see how that person interacts with an entire environment. That is an enormous amount of information that you get without having to do data points of the, of the conversation. When I think about education, it's really that, the data points of education. It's the, it's the kinds of questions that people ask that, do you have brothers, do you have sisters? What about your parents? Where did you grow up? Where do you live? What school did you go to? What do you do now? Seriously, does that make somebody interesting in that kind of a way? So it's really more like, you know, actually, if I was totally bold, I would say some of the best cards of my game, where should we begin, are fantastic dating questions because they're not about gathering information, they're about storytelling. And when a person tells you a story, they tell you about their world, their dreams, their aspirations, their anxieties, their experiences without having to give you information. They give you life stories. And seduction, seduction is about mystery. It is about, you know, this checking in, approaching, waiting, seeing if the other person comes toward you, not moving, letting them get a little bit unsettled, then moving back just so that they don't take it as for granted, then coming forward again. It's this beautiful back and forth movement of dance between two people and you want to slow it down. You don't just want to collapse it. You want to keep that distance, that space in between and make it as alive and as pregnant, if I may say, as you can. And then connection. Connection is how you feel in the experience with that person. And if you feel like there was a click, there's something, I leave, I keep thinking about you, I'm imagining seeing you again, I want more, say it and say it in a beautiful little text or say it by leaving a voice message because if you share by voice, it just brings you so much closer. And I know it because I know when people listen to a podcast and they hear, you know, it, it's like they're right there. So you telling them, I really enjoyed this. This was very special for me. I'd love for us to continue. 
it's extremely affirming and you need to own your wanting that is the expression of desire and it is vulnerable but that vulnerability is this fantastic combination in the beginning between uncertainty and insecurity and excitement and curiosity you can't avoid it if you want to go through that tunnel this is it this is it and if you don't want to see the person again and you don't feel that you connected then you basically let them know as well. It was really nice to meet you. I enjoyed it very much. And, but I hope we run into each other in a more casual way. And you don't play with them. You don't string them along. You don't play the game of, yes, we should meet again, but I'm busy next week for the next three weeks. I can't see you. And kind of keep them simmering, you know, a petit feu, as they say in French, with a little fire, just enough so they can't leave, but not too much so that you have lost them and you can hedge your bets and see what else is out there. We don't want to be treated like this and we shouldn't treat other people like that too. It's a very okay thing to just say, it was nice, but no thanks. Wish you all the best, just decency. It leaves other people with a sense that somebody respected them enough to treat them with kindness. And kindness is what I think is often missing in modern dating today. So I invite you to be kind, to change context, to drop the list, to change the kind of way that you get to know somebody, to play with the mystery and to respect the connection or lack thereof. Here we go on dating.